I'm very delighted today to welcome Mr. Daniel Yu, Chairman and Director of Maxwell Electronic Limited, and Mrs. Yu to be here with us today in the inaugural lecture of the Daniel Yu Professorship in Infectious Diseases. Mr. Yu is a successful entrepreneur who started his business at a very young age. After graduate from St. John's University in Shanghai, he found himself very fond of electronics, and he soon established his company, Maxwell Electronics Limited, which then becomes a leading electronic company that offers high quality electronic products to consumers, including flashes units, which is like the one that they are using. Apart from his successful business, Mr. Yu is also praised highly for his great compassion towards the community and future generations in giving unwavering support to medical research at high institutions in area of infectious disease, among others. The generous support from Mr. Daniel Yu makes the recruitment of more academic staff in infectious disease possible for reinforcing research activities, patient care, and medical education. <laughs> Professor Nelson Lee, an accomplished researcher in infectious diseases, is one of our warriors in battles with the ever evolving pathogens, trying hard 24 hours a day, seven days a week to outsmart our efforts to keep them at bay. He has published over 230 research articles in high impact journals, such as the New England Journal of Medicine and The Lancet. The WHO has cited Professor Lee's findings as clinical guidelines has been actively engaged in specialist training and in serving different advisory boards. He has received numerous honors in recognition of his research in infectious diseases. Dear Mr. Daniel Yu, Mrs. Yu, Vice Chancellor, Dean, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks and gratitude to Mr. Yu for your support to the Chinese University of Hong Kong and the specialty of infectious diseases. It's indeed my great honor to assume the title of Daniel Yu Professorship. I would like to begin by telling you why I chose to become a doctor in the late 1980s. I was inspired by the biblical story that Jesus touched. Yes, I mean touched a patient with a highly contagious infection, of course at that time without gloves and gowns, and at that time is leprosy. Of course you know that the man was healed physically, but I believe that the act of care, to touch a patient no one had ever wanted to touch, also healed the man's heart. In the morning of the 10th of March, 2003, right outside the ninth floor conference room, I think most of you have been there. Professor Song asked me to look into what happened in Ward 8A, as many doctors and nurses took sick leave because of fever. I went in there wearing a surgical mask and reported an outbreak of a previously unknown respiratory infection. And the rest was just history. I will use a few slides to summarize our research on SARS, which happened in the following few years. Now we come to understand that SARS is a triphasic disease. The rhythmic phase, the hyperimmune phase, and the lung destruction phase. Radiographically, SARS progresses from a small focal patch of pneumonia to bilateral and multisonal involvement, and ultimately ARDS, in some cases. By the end of the outbreak, our unit had managed over 320 <coughs> SARS patients. About 15% required ventilation for life support, 
Some of these develop further complications such as pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, and secondary bacterial infections. Overall, the survival rate was about 90%. After the SARS outbreak in 2003, I thought we will have some time to relax. Unfortunately, in addition to the continuous threat by avian influenza H5N1 in our region, in year 2009, we had the worldwide H1N1 influenza pandemic. And in late 2012, exactly 10 years after SARS, another novel coronavirus emerged in the Middle East. To date, 700 cases have been reported. The disease is more deadly than SARS and has a fatality rate of about 30 to 50% in some cases. In 2013, China reported an avian influenza epidemic caused by a novel H7N9 virus along its east coast. And the new MERS coronavirus again has its roots in bats, but the most recent evidence suggests that camels might be the intermediate host. Next, I hope to share with you some of the works we did to meet the challenges posed by one of the emerging infectious diseases, influenza. In this collaborative work with the virology team and other award-winning study, we first reported that patients hospitalized for influenza have a significantly higher viral load than those with milder infections. And there are correlations between viral loads and symptom severity and development of complications such as pneumonia. Antiviral initiated within the first 48 hours from onset and even within 96 hours from onset, as shown by these red lines, was significantly associated with improved survival. We estimated that the reduction in death risk was about 73% in those who received timely treatment. Besides seasonal and pandemic influenza, we also studied avian influenza. Collaborating with an international team, our group published the largest cohort of H5N1 patients to date, which included over 400 confirmed cases. In collaboration with Professor C.K. Wong and his team, in this award-winning study, we confirmed that uncontrolled viral replication is the primary driving force of cytokine chemokine responses, and that the pro pro-inflammatory cytokines, including IL-6, IL-8, MCP-1, and TNF-alpha, have played important roles in mediating symptoms like high fever, tissue injury, and diffuse alveolar damage. Plenty of work still needs to be done. Some of these works have already been completed and published, have received academic and media attention, while others are still in progress. I would like to give my special thanks to my mentor, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Joseph Song, who has given me a lot of opportunities, supports, and encouragement throughout the years. Lastly, I thank God for giving me a loving family, which means the most to me. Once again, I'd like to thank Mr. Yu for your very generous support to CHK and the Division of Infectious Diseases. Thank you, Professor Lee. And the inaugural lecture now concludes.